In this video, we at iDoc Europe show you how to replace the lightning connector of your iPhone XR yourself. The repair is a bit more difficult because the display is glued on and you have to take care of the somewhat fragile flex cables. You should plan at least 30 to 60 minutes, if you're not yet familiar with iPhone repairs, you'd better plan a little more time for it. For the repair we recommend the following tools. Tools and spare parts are available from iDoc at www.idoc.eu. All links can be found in the video description. And now we wish you a lot of fun. Before the repair, turn off your iPhone to avoid short circuits. Press and hold the standby button and one of the volume buttons, and then confirm to switch off the phone. To remove the display, first remove the two pentalobe screws to the left and right of the lightning connector. Apple uses special pentalobe screws here. The links to all necessary tools can be found in the video description. The display is strongly glued. So you should heat the glue to remove the display. Use a heat gun or a hairdryer. To remove the display you will also need a suction cup and a hard plastic plectrum. An iFlex is also handy for getting into the narrow gap between the display and the frame. Note, however, that the iPhone is no longer waterproof after a repair. Heat the edges of the display to about 60 degrees Celsius. Take care not to overheat the device. As a rule of thumb, always heat the device only so far that you can still touch the heated area with your hand. Heating softens the glue a little bit and lets you remove the display. Now grab your suction cup and stick it to the bottom of the display. Next pull on the suction cup and insert a plectrum into the space between display and frame. If you have been able to push the plectrum in a little bit, move the plectrum once around the frame and lever the display slightly upwards. If you can't get a plectrum into the gap between the display and the frame, you can use a thinner tool like the iFlex. But be careful not to scratch the frame nor go too far into the device with the tool. Also, when working with the plectrum, be careful not to insert it too far into the device. Be especially careful on the right side, where the display connection cables are located. Heat the edge repeatedly and gradually loosen the display adhesive. Once the glue is loosened all around, you can fold open the display. Don't unfold the display too much, or the cables might get strained and suffer damage. Put a stable object next to the iPhone to support the display and make sure your device doesn't slip away. Now first disconnect the battery to make the iPhone completely disconnected from the power source. Loosen the screws on the cover plate above the battery contact. Apple uses again special screws, which have a Y-shaped profile. Use a suitable Y-type screwdriver to avoid damaging the heads. Remove the metal plate and put all parts together on a square of your magnetic mat. Now carefully lever off the battery contact with a plastic spudger and bend it a little to the side. The display unit is connected with three connectors. First remove the cover plate over the display connectors. Loosen the two screws, remove the plate and then carefully separate the connectors with a spudger. Hold the display firmly and take care not to stretch the thin flex cables. The third cable is slightly longer, so you can now place the display flat next to the device. Loosen the screws of the next cover. Be careful not to swap the screws. The easiest way to do this is with an iDoc magnetic pad, on which you can arrange the screws and the cover plate as they are placed in the device. Take the plate to the side and loosen the connector with the spudger. Now everything is disconnected and you can set the display unit aside. Remove the Phillips screws of different lengths from the speaker cover plate. The screws have different lengths, so sort them correctly. Then carefully lift up the cover plate. It is still connected to a contact in the device. Loosen the connector and remove the cover. Remove the slightly glued rubber cover over the contact of the Taptic engine. Then you can loosen the screws of the speaker.
Remove the cover. A small metal clip is screwed in at the top of the speaker. Grab it with tweezers and remove the screw. Remember the orientation so that you can reinsert the clip correctly later. The speaker is glued to the bottom edge of the frame. With hot air you can loosen the glue more easily. Then lift the speaker up a little and remove it from the unit. Carefully disconnect the taptic engine contact and then loosen the two screws. Then you can remove the taptic engine. In the following steps, the battery is removed in the video. To replace the lightning connector, however, it is not necessary to take it out of the device. The camera is again secured with a cover plate. Loosen the two screws and remove the plate. For the standoff screws there are special screwdrivers with a centering pin in the middle. With this the screws can be loosened easy. Alternatively, you can also use a narrow slotted screwdriver. Then disconnect the plug from the PCB. Now carefully lever at one side to loosen the camera and remove it from the device. On the iPhone XR, the SIM card reader is a separate component for the first time on an iPhone and can be replaced individually. First remove the SIM card holder from the device. Carefully separate the contact with a spudger. Then loosen the screws that hold the card reader in place. Push the SIM pin back and remove the SIM card reader from the device. To remove the logic board, first disconnect all connectors. The connectors for example connect the charging socket, different antennas and the buttons. Always lever carefully to avoid damaging any components on the board and not breaking any plugs. There is another connector under one of the contacts of the front camera. When you have unplugged all connectors, you can remove the logic board screws. Now everything is loosened and you can lift the logic board up carefully. Bend all cables to the side and then guide the logic board out of the device. Where the headphone socket used to be, there is now a small plastic cover screwed on. Loosen both screws and remove the part. The flex cable of the charger socket is glued over a large area in the back cover and is fastened with two screws at the bottom of the device. Loosen the two screws that fix the charging port at the bottom of the frame. Heat the entire flex cable with the heat gun to loosen the glue more easily. Use the steel spatula to slide under the cable and gradually remove it from the back cover. If your battery is still in the device be especially careful not to damage it when working with the steel spatula or tweezers. Carefully remove the two golden microphones from the frame. Heat several times to make the glue easier to remove. Lever the charging jack out of its guide and then loosen the rest of the cable. Compare the old lightning connector with the new spare part. There may still be adhesive on the microphone that you need to take over for the microphone to sit firmly in the frame. Also remove any protective film over the adhesive surfaces of the new lightning connector. Position the lightning connector in the iPhone and push the charging socket into its opening at the bottom. Press the two golden microphones against the lower part of the case.
Insert the small nose into the opening in the frame, then the microphones will fit properly. Screw the lightning connector back in place. Place the barometric cover in place and push it into position while screwing it in. To reinsert the logic board position it on the long side at an angle and guide it slowly into the device. Be careful not to squeeze any cable under the board. Next to the camera opening is a small plastic guide that must be above the logic board. Then connect all connectors. Position them over their sockets and press them down when they are correctly positioned. Now secure the logic board by fastening all the screws. Place the SIM card reader back in its position and screw it on. Then connect the contact of the card reader. Insert the SIM card holder. You shouldn't feel any strong resistance, otherwise the card reader is not yet positioned correctly. Now you can reinsert the eyesight camera. Make sure that there is no dust or fingerprints on the camera lens and on the inside of the device. Insert the camera module into the device and connect the connector. Position the cover plate and screw it in place. Now you can install all the other parts. First put the Taptic engine back in the device. Make sure that the screw holes of the Taptic engine are sitting right. Plug the Taptic engine connector back in and fasten it using the Phillips screws. Check the glue around the speaker opening. Make sure the adhesive doesn't cover the opening. Then put the speaker back in place and push it towards the bottom so that it sticks a little. Hold it tight while screwing in the first screws. Also reinsert the metal clip and screw it in place. Secure the contact of the Taptic engine with the cover plate and screw it in. Then you can reattach the rubber cover. Position the long cover plate on the edge and connect the square shaped connector first. Then fold down the cover plate and put it down so that the screw holes are above the threads. Hold the cover in place and tighten all screws. To protect the iPhone against dust and splash water it is recommended to use a new adhesive frame. In this video you can see the iPhone 8 but the procedure is the same for the iPhone XR. First remove all glue residue, so the new glue will hold. But do remember that the iPhone will no longer be 100% waterproof. Before attaching the frame sticker make sure it's aligned right. The corners and the holes for the camera show you which way is up or down. Now remove the first backing film. First put the frame smoothly on one side of the device and press it on slightly. Then press on the sticker all around. Make sure that the sticker stays inside of the frame all around. Grab a spudger to make the frame sticker hold properly. Now you can remove the second big carrier film. You can remove the last small part of film now or after connecting and testing the display. Leaving the film on prevents the display from sticking too early. Place the display unit next to your device. Hold the earpiece cable in your hand and gently plug in the connector. Make sure you put it on properly before pressing it down firmly. Do not slide the connector over the socket on the logic board to avoid damaging the individual pins. Then reattach the cover and screw it in place. To plug in the other connectors, lean the display against a stable object. In this way you avoid stretching the fragile flex cables too far. 
Connect the two connectors and screw the cover plate back in place. Finally you can connect the battery contact. Position it over its place on the logic board and press it firmly. Put the metal bracket on and screw it down. You can now do a quick test to make sure the new lightning connector is working right. You can also test if the display is connected correctly. Carefully fold down the display, but don't press it onto the frame yet. Now press and hold the standby button to start your device. Test if the display works correctly and connect your device to a power source or a computer to test if the lightning connector is working right. If everything works fine you can go on and close the device. Make sure the display is sitting right before you press it on. Gradually press down the display so it's sitting on the frame right. Now you can fasten the pentalobe screws at the lower end of the iPhone. Your iPhone is fixed now and we hope it was fun for you. If you liked the video, why don't you leave a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. High quality tools, spare parts and accessories are available in our store. See you next time.